Welcome back. And once again, we're going into a Halloween theme. This time, we're talking about a different type of monster. One that's all too real. The shadow of your former self. The thing that you become when you die. And welcome back to the heart of the stories we tell. I'm Rob the Host, and this is another look deep into what makes a story a story. A theory on storytelling by a storyteller who believes that every story has merit. And tonight's episode is... Ghosts and ghost stories. Now, like every monster story, the ghost holds a special spot in our heart. But it's a little different than some of the others. Because you see, where yes, you may be afraid of vampires as a child, when you grow up, probably not as much. The same with a Frankenstein's monster, or even a ghoul. But a ghost, a ghost touches you personally. And as we discussed last year, Sometimes those personal touches are all it takes. In its heart, even Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and the story about it is a story about ghosts, because they're ghosts that haunt and take over machinery. If you like this and other ideas like it, hit that subscribe button if this is your first time here. But for now, let's get to the heart of ghost stories. Whoa, ha, 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 ha. Before we get into the scripted version of it, Let's get into the not-so-scripted version. Reality TV is full of these shows. Things that people are looking for. Because we want to believe that there's life after death and there's a way to communicate with our loved ones. And we're afraid of the creatures that come in the night. Now, some of these people are relatively benign. And some of them are con artists, plain and simple. And now, whether you believe that it's possible to see ghosts... You have to at least understand there is such a thing called cold reading, and con artists do it all the time. I'm afraid I have a personal experience with this. It's a skill I'm glad I didn't pick up. But the ability to read someone, understand what's going on, throw out generalities, and then narrow in to make them think you're talking about them. But again, that's not saying that all of them are. There are some of them that obviously aren't doing that. And as much as I'm hesitant to call the paranormal a full-on true science, there are people that study it like it is. So, maybe if you have some unfinished business, maybe if you killed someone, a telltale heart will beat in your mind. And maybe, just maybe, late at night, a spooky specter will visit you. And let's be honest, some of the scariest stories have the words based on a true story, written right on them. On the other hand, Hollywood's gone out of its way to make some pretty scary ghost stories up itself. Some stolen from other cultures, some just in general. But at the end of the day, why do we keep coming back to that well? I mean, we use it for kids' cartoons, even. Scooby-Doo originally had every supernatural creature rip off a mask, and nope, it's really Old Man Jenkins. But then they started doing real ghosts. Why? Because they know that we all have this inner dread that we want to be scared of the 13 ghosts of Scooby-Doo. And even notwithstanding that, we have plenty of kids' stories that go back God knows how long, where we talk about the good-natured spirit. Or we have comedies, movies that maybe aren't meant for children per se, but are obviously not supposed to be too scary. And we even tell them as fables, as ways to teach right from wrong. And sometimes, we just tell them on the internet as creepy pasta. This might be the horror story that is at the heart of all horror stories. Something you fear, something primordial. Something that you want to believe in, because you want life to go on. But at the same time creeps you out. Something that just sends those chills up your spine. And that's why ghost stories have survived. Some of the first horror stories that most of us remember are those that we told sitting around the campfire, or sitting up late at a slumber party, or even just passing notes in school. Meanwhile, we have writers like Jim Butcher who write ghost stories just because. And again, they're all types. So why do we tell them? Because we like to be scared, but we like to be comforted. And these have spread into every type of medium. The Sixth Sense isn't really a ghost story. 
Not really, but it kind of is. It's a coming-of-age family drama about getting on with your life, with a ghost as a backdrop. There's a Pokemon creepypasta that talks about a hidden level, a hidden villain within the game. One that's haunting and scary. And why do we tell that story? Because again, it lets us just believe for that second. And Lord knows that's far from the only type of ghost story we tell. Our comic book characters, sometimes even our heroes, are ghosts. In the case of the Spectre, he's a dead person merged with the spirit of vengeance itself. Ghost Rider and Marvel the same. We tell love stories about how love conquers all, even death itself, to come back to see the one you love one more time. And we also have family-friendly dramas that we put up on TV, where a character can see and interact with ghosts. Why? Because that's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to see the dead. We want to confirm what's it like on the other side. Saving Hope takes the idea of the brilliant doctor one step forward and has him have the sixth sense of seeing dead people. Well, most of the time unconscious people, which allows him to learn what's needed. Necroscope did the same thing by having the dead want to teach Harry. At the end of the day, these dead ghosts are allies helping, but they're still scary. Why? Because they're different. They don't make sense to us. The undead just don't work in science, and we feel that deep down. So let's really talk about what we're doing when we tell these ghost stories. We're going on that roller coaster ride, whether the undead are enhancing or modifying our technology by haunting it, whether it's haunting an old castle and we're looking for the truth, or whether it's a magical videotape that when you see it you die in seven days. It doesn't matter, because all of it is really the same story. Life after death, these scary spirits. Now then, maybe I misspoke for a second there because I said spirits, and spirits and ghosts are actually two different things. Ghosts are people who died. Spirits can be that, because we use them interchangeably, but could also be something like uh, spiritual, the spirit of the rock, the spirit of love. And I don't want to cloud the issue with that. For now, I want to ask you, what do you think of ghost stories? And do you still tell them when you gather around for a campfire, or a bonfire, or maybe even a slumber party or two? Let me know down in the comment section below, along with what you think in general about spooky ghost stories. And speaking of spooky stories, if you're in the mood for one that could help out a good cause, namely the Jimmy Fund, you can check out the Nikon Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep, now available on digital formats. And also a friend of mine, Kaya, has an anthology up on Amazon, both of which could give you a nice, creepy experience this Halloween. And with only one video left for October, we're going to continue on from Ghosts and go to its logical conclusion, death itself. But if you enjoyed this look at the spooky side, I'd like you to like and share this video, especially since I really like to boost what sort of responses we get. And if you're new here or you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. I'd really like to build up a community here, one where we can talk about the hows and whys, and I think that talking about why and how we tell ghost stories could make an interesting little discussion in the comments and maybe even a future video. But for now, I have to go get ready to prep my final video for the month. The spooky concept of death. I hope you have a good night, and thanks for watching.